Today I wanted to answer a question that I had from a guy who left uh, a comment, uh, quite a lengthy comment underneath one of my videos called Approach Anxiety Is Not Real. And I, I really wanted to dedicate this video to answering uh, this guy's question because um, I think it's something that a lot of men certainly struggle with. Uh, and, uh, and in his message, he really kind of speaks a lot about how his anxiety does get the better of him and uh, and certainly his limiting beliefs as well and i think this will be something that uh, a lot of guys who are maybe new to doing day game or cold approaching or street approaching um will probably relate to there'll probably be a lot of things here that you'll notice um uh that there'll be a lot of similarities between you and and this guy who left this comment and i did actually give him uh, a response underneath but i did say to him that i was gonna make a video so although this is uh, a week later than uh, than planned um i think uh this will be something that hopefully uh will help you out edgar uh as well as just for other men who also have a lot of anxiety and uh, a lot of uh uh, misunderstandings about just how um, uh, people socialize and interact with each other. So as I say, this is quite a lengthy comment, but I, out of respect to Edgar, I do want to read it all. But if you don't want to hear the whole message, um, I will actually give a summary of it just afterwards. So if you want to skip to that chapter, um, you are more than welcome to if you want to get uh, just the, uh, the, the briefer understanding of what this guy is going through. But I will say that there is a lot of stuff here that I think most men will sympathize with. They will relate to and are probably even going through very similar circumstances themselves. So entirely up to you whether you want to skip this or not. But um, I will read it all out because, you know, I, I think it's important to just certainly emphasize um, the... Uh, the the issues um, that are going on here. So uh, Edgar puts, uh, hello, my name is Edgar. I'm 26 years old and I'm from Guatemala, Central America. I've been watching your videos because they caught my attention because you talk specifically about these topics. Since practically this is the problem that I'm suffering a lot from, it's hard for me to approach you. Um, so again, th thank you so much for reaching out anyway. Um, so to the girls, I like to do it more on the street because I challenge myself since it, since uh, uh, it is a complete stranger. Um, I did my first trip on September 8th, 2023, very specific. Uh, and I did it in total from September 8th to September 20th. I did 12 approaches uh, a few years ago. Just the idea of approaching a girl on the street seemed like a total madness to me. And I told myself in my mind how I would approach a girl on the street that it's not possible. I've been watching videos of approaches since 2020 and have never done it. And until this year, 2023, when reality hit, my beliefs came with me since I was a child. Now I struggle when I go out to day game. I already said that I don't do it except on the street. No, uh, no, I like shopping centers, not because I'm afraid, uh, I've gone alone a lot of times. And another thing, I don't go out with anyone. I go out alone. I did this alone without anyone's help because I told myself in my mind how and why I needed a partner to go and talk to a girl. Ha. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't even say I was a... Uh, well, he's, he's sort of suggesting that... Um, uh something there uh let, let's just say that he's uh, as an excuse to to try and uh talk to girls um uh, and on september 8th uh my beliefs everything i had in my mind about approaching girls broke into pieces because i was direct without detours i told a girl that she was pretty and that i liked her and that's why i was saying hello to her she laughed and said thank you and went uh, and I went to drop her off at her house and gave her my number. She didn't eat, uh, she didn't get anything. Uh, she didn't get anything. And that was only uh, one of the 12 approaches I made. I think he's probably saying there that, that nothing came out of that circumstance. Um, but the fact that I was able to do it, it was incredible. 
me just scroll uh, it's not much left uh before i had doubts that i was not worthy of talking to girls that they would all reject me today i struggle a little with that with what the girls ignore me uh, uh when i'm uh, about to go and talk to them on the street they move to another sidewalk and that puts me in a bad mood and i say crap <laughs> uh, uh i'm not going to uh, i'm not going to do it anymore even though in my mind i know i should try it but it makes me in a bad mood and i stop doing day game uh help me see uh help me if i see that several girls still ignore me i totally deserve it now i um now i i think basically in summary uh just to kind of point out a couple of things that he uh mentions here so he talks about um uh him going out and doing uh day game or street approaching uh on his own um he then also uh talks about um that uh you know for a long time he didn't believe it was possible to go and talk to strangers um and uh and he actually did do it and had a good conversation with someone and uh, uh i'm gonna hope in a very uh, gentlemanly kind of way took her back to her home um he then uh talks about um just some of the uh, just a limiting be- belief that he has about himself um with things not being possible but also he taught he does talk about uh, the fact that you know when uh, that he is affected um when uh when women either ignore him or or maybe they see him and then they move away from him on the street. So uh, again, thank you so much for um, uh, the uh, the comment, Edgar. Uh, I mean, I, it it really means a lot to me just the fact that you opened up um, and shared a lot. You know, I know um, people sort of like uh you know might joke and say about like oh well, you know people sharing their life story on uh, in the comments, but for me i i really like that because this is a way this is a form of therapy you know if people are really genuinely sharing their um you know personal struggles and traumas and they're reaching out for help i don't think it's then something to uh, essentially knock and and make fun of i think then it's an opportunity to be able to help someone um and uh, and if it means then making a difference for uh, for edgar or even for other men then i think it's important to to certainly you know uh cover and talk about the uh, the issues that are going on here so first of all let's just talk about with the uh, the solo thing so uh, so Edgar, I first of all, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Being able to go out and do um, uh, sort of street approaching stuff on your own is is really a good thing. Um, not being reliant on other people does allow you to actually uh, improve your own independence and removes your reliance on other people as well. But there is a little bit of um, a catch twenty two though with going out and doing street approaching on your own is that if you are going out for hours upon hours on your own it can become very lonely and actually it can also create a bit of an unsocial dynamic for you as well as you're trying to create a social dynamic as well so you know it it can be both beneficial and unbeneficial to go out on your own so it's good to just try and balance you know spending time with people and practicing with other people sometimes people that are better than you sometimes people that are worse than you where you get to learn from other people as well as you get to teach other people and in just those two experiences you really learn a lot about yourself and in fact i think it even refines your teaching method and just your understanding of how uh, attraction and and how socializing works so it's important to um to certainly balance that out and i'd even actually mentioned as well something that can also just remove any kind of limiting belief of uh feeling a bit weird uh to go and approach people even on your own um is to go and 
participate in more social things. So, you know, go to um, uh, clubs, events, workshops, networking, um, uh, having hobbies or interests and stuff, just being in environments that do allow you to just constantly socialize with people will actually, in fact, make uh, going out and doing solo even easier because you're uh, you're improving your confidence and you're improving your social skills, which ultimately is also going to just improve your general mood when you're going out. And uh, and I'll get back to it with mood um, with going out. We'll, I'll get to that bit. Uh, so so that's kind of uh, uh, hopefully that just sort of gives good advice for the solo thing. And again, I, I approve being able to do it on your own is great, but don't do it forever. Um, I have seen a lot of guys who do go out a lot on their own and the problem is is then the, the they are secretly lonely they are very lonely they they if they're spending all of their time just going out and trying to talk to women and date women they have no friends you know they even alienate themselves away from like whatever friends they did have and family and even at work as well because they're not training themselves in how to be sociable all they're doing is training themselves how to develop that you know five minute sales pitch to um to get a girl to to go on a date with them you know um there's kind of like the element of the whole you know great with great power comes great responsibility but you are also then only developing just a particular form of um conversation skills you need to really open up that um ability to talk to people in a way that's building attraction and in just a way that's just having normal conversations as well. Um, and that's also what takes people out of that kind of like weird mentality if they're going out and doing approaching, especially on their own. Um, so that was so that was kind of the, the solo uh, uh, topic mentioned. Um, uh, you mentioned about that you, for the first time that you gave uh, a girl a compliment uh, and, and she loved it. And, uh, and then you, you took her back to, you walked her to her home and you gave her your number. Um, I think for, you know, I, I, I think just the fact that you did that will give you a much more positive mindset when you're going out and talking to people. Um, like I've known guys who just even going over to give a compliment and the girl saying thank you is like the most biggest win in the world for them and there is nothing wrong with that I you know it it bugs me when I've then heard like guys who are going on dates and sleeping with women they're like oh yeah yeah I can't you just gave a compliment oh but that's that's rubbish like you should be going getting her out on a date or this you know the the pickup paradigm I, I don't think is um I think in this day and age now, it's not the most appropriate uh, paradigm to be following, you know, or thought process. You know, if you're you're looking to develop your confidence and meet women and have a date in life that you want, following this attitude of like, oh, well, if you didn't sleep with her, then you failed. It is just ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. When you've got guys who may be so far from where other people's social norm would be. So like if people are like, like people who suffer from social anxiety disorders, who just can't leave the house and just even give a compliment to a stranger or ask someone for directions or for help, you know, it's not fair to, you know, uh, to knock them if you can comfortably go up and, and talk to people and have conversations, get phone numbers, dates, and so on. Instead, you should be helping your fellow man out and um, and getting them to that point that they can be as good as you. And this is why, you know, uh, Edgar, you should be so proud of yourself that you had that ability to walk with a girl back to hers and you had the balls to even offer your phone number and she took it and it didn't matter that nothing came out of it i would just consider all of this early days for you my friend and never forget that even the little things if they are something that you have never done before that which are completely against what would be considered the social norm or outside of the reality that you've been trapped in for so many years then you should consider this uh, a bit of a win 
really for you you should be uh absolutely proud of yourself i i know i am if we were, if i was working with you and we were on the street and i pushed you into that interaction and you did it and you walked with her and you gave a number I, i'd be probably clapping and giving you a bro hug afterwards I'm, i'd be so proud of you for doing that so i think it's it's great that that you did that and this is still early days for you my friend um so just keep on practicing and doing it and you'll be fine uh which kind of leads on to um sort of really like the last bits that he was talking about uh which is how uh when he was doing the approaching um you know some girls would just ignore him or if they saw him they would walk to the other side of the street and uh and that would put him in a bad mood and maybe even probably I would assume maybe even uh, stop you from wanting to do any more approaching that day. So this is where, uh, like with what I mentioned about with mood with going out, um, I have seen it a lot where a lot of guys, um, when their anxiety is getting the better of them, they're not really being their true self. They're not being in their relaxed, confident um, and, uh, and chill sort of vibe. And unfortunately, um, it's quite easy for um, uh, outsiders to, to kind of see and feel that. And you can inadvertently give a bad impression of yourself without even doing anything. Now, I don't know what you look like as well. Um, you Maybe you look quite intimidating or maybe... You look like the most uh, <laughs> uh, gentle looking guy. And it just unfortunately, you know, when your anxiety kicks in, maybe you have like a really like serious look on your face. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of factors that can go into this, which is why, you know, first impressions always matter. Dress as nicely and as well as you can. Be as well groomed as you can and always try your best to uh, walk, you know, really proudly with a smile on your face as if, you know, you've just won the lottery or you're just in a really great mood because great things are happening to you or you're even maybe future predicting and uh, maybe bringing in a bit of method acting and seeing it as like, you know what, good things are going to happen to me today. You know, that kind of stoic philosophy thrown in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you if it's very easy for any guy to be knocked if a girl says no uh, or if she ignores you or she's not interested, um, and you have to just bear in mind that you don't know what is going on in her life. You don't know what experiences she's having. You also don't know what's happened in her past as well. She could be just having a bad day. It could be a time of the month. She could just have a lot of things going on with work, friends, family. She maybe has even had bad experiences of men coming over to her in the past who have genuinely harassed her. And so she's got her guard up. And I'd even actually put in the comment to you as well, you know, like here in London, um, the only people that really tend to, you know, go up to strangers on the street are charity workers you know they'll kind of like put themselves in certain locations by like train stations or on the, the main high streets and they stop people and when they stop people the the people know that you know these charity workers want something from them they know they're going to give whatever sales pitch but ultimately they want to take something from them and you know it's safe to say anyone feels that both men and women feel that they know when someone wants something from them so all i can say um in this particular instance is first of all don't let uh you know someone turning you down or ignoring you or saying no or walking to the other side of the street don't let that knock your confidence or self-esteem okay that happens i would say if someone's walk if someone sees you and walks to the other side of the road then i would probably have to sort of understand better you know why is that are you maybe dressing in like a tracksuit and you look a little bit dodgy or you know did you follow her for too long and she spotted you a couple of times and perhaps you've actually weirded her out and that has happened i've seen that with uh, guys who've gone to dating coaches and I filmed them for like private um, private use and 
because of their anxiety, they want to go and talk to the girl, but they sort of keep on delaying it or they keep having hiccups along the way. And then the girl has spotted them two, three times down like literally a main high street for like for minutes. And then the girl has gotten weirded out. And in, and it's fair. It's absolutely fair that at that point, you know, she's going to walk to the other side. She's going to go into a shop because she now feels that someone is following her. And yeah, you know, that that's where you you have to kind of accept. You know what? I'm going to take responsibility here. I wanted to go over and give a compliment and say hello, but you know what? I did leave that too long. So that could be also a potential factor in why maybe you know someone is going across the road. But all I can say is, even in those moments, if it's knocking your confidence, if it's knocking your self esteem just take a step back or, or take it down a notch with what are you going to do in your interactions? Maybe instead of thinking, right, I'm going to go and have a conversation, maybe just knock it down to just giving a compliment. Simplify it, knowing then that you are just going to go in and exit as soon as possible might also shift your... Um, uh, your attitude to what is going to take place. And that may also affect your body externally as well. You might not look then so intimidating. Um, it's crazy just how method acting um, can essentially work just by changing your limiting belief about something. So maybe rather than thinking like, oh, I've got to have a conversation with her. I've got to get her number. Maybe instead just shift in that belief to, you know what? I'm going to give her a compliment. I'm going to see what happens. It doesn't matter if she walks away. It doesn't matter if she ignores me. It doesn't matter if she's not interested. I'm just really glad and proud that I went over just to try and make her day better and give her a really nice compliment. Now, if someone doesn't accept a compliment, I think that says more about them than about you. But also, if you can do other good things in your life, that can also just help to validate um, any kind of uh, uh, goodness that you have as well. Because I've also known good men um, who also do get knocked when um, uh, a girl says no to them. And they can be doing like stuff for charity. They could be helping the homeless and stuff. And then afterwards you know being able to speak to them and and, they, and say like but you you do so much good in your life how can you be a bad person if she said no to you then she wasn't the one uh for you to connect with and that is absolutely okay so it's having just realistic expectations uh when you're talking to people and again remembering you don't know what's going on in their life you don't know what's happened or what's currently going on you don't know what experiences they've had and also you have to potentially take responsibility here and think you know if someone's walking across the road what have i done that may have um uh, influence that to happen did I look too intimidating have I followed her for too long um, you know because uh, this isn't about creeping people out you do have to uh, either just get on and, and do it give someone go over and speak to someone as soon as you possibly can or let them be and you know and if you're in this practice phase of you know uh, developing your social skills and confidence then you also have to um uh, you have to manage your expectations to that as well. If you're very new at this, don't go thinking, right, I'm going to go out, I'm going to sleep with women and I'm going to get instant dates and stuff. It, it's it's too much too early. Instead, just just focus on the, the little things, focus on those little wins. And I can promise you in uh, weeks time, in months time, if you're going out constantly practicing, you're, you're going to develop your confidence and you're going to have even better interactions as well. Unfortunately, at the start, everyone is crap. Um, everyone struggles. Everyone goes through all of these very similar dilemmas. But you do have to um, uh, accommodate to the situation and, uh, and manage your expectations. So thank you very much for watching. Edgar, again, thank you so much for your uh, your comment. Um, I'd love to hear other people's thoughts on this video as well. So if you can leave a comment uh, underneath this video, that would be great. Um, if you can like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'd love to be able to answer more questions on this channel and help more men with their uh, anxiety and trauma issues. Um, and 
you know, and more importantly, if you do want to overcome your anxiety and you are looking to remove any of the past traumas that you've got that may be preventing you from having uh, a really good dating life, then I'd love it if you can get in touch and uh, and check out my my website below and hopefully I can help you to overcome that too. But until my next video, keep your anxiety at bay and uh, and look forward to more content soon.